everybody, and welcome to another Friday Mastermind session. You've got myself, Dave Savage. By the way, I'm remote. What's up, everybody? Uh, I want to is. get the camera camera on. I'm just driving my car down the freeway. No, I'm kidding. I'm parked. Uh, <laughs> so, so today is all about getting smarter with Facebook marketing. Uh, we we believe very much at Mortgage Coach that if you want to be successful in 2020 and beyond, the the loan officer, the lender with the most digital friends wins. Um, we believe very strongly that means you need to get everybody to download your app. You need to be delivering mortgage coach experiences with your mobile app. But we also believe that means Facebook. That means multi-channel marketing. That means omni-channel marketing. Uh, today we're gonna we're gonna focus on Facebook. We've got Bill Hillstad back. What's up, Bill Hillstad? <laughs> Guys, happy to be here. Good to have you. Thank you for making so much time and bringing so much value. Uh, your your last interview, I think, is the all time most uh, viewed uh, Friday interview of these Friday calls that we do. I think over a thousand people have been through that um, educational experience. And oh wow, the, the bar's high. The bar's high for you, brother. I mean, uh, <laughs> we're to to go to an even higher level is not an easy lift. Uh, we've got Todd Bookspan. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Good to uh, be here. Excited to uh, learn more from Bill today. Right on. We've got Jen Duplessis. Hello, Jen. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. And then we have uh, the voice from above. She doesn't have her video today, but we have Michelle Town. Hey, Michelle. Good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Hi, so for any, anybody that's new to the Friday Mastermind call, this is it's a mastermind. So ask questions uh, in parallel to what we have online here, or I don't know, however you're watching it, whether you're watching it on your mobile device or on a computer. We also have a Facebook group. It's called Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. So if you are not already a part of that community, just do a search and someone on the team will approve you. If you're a mortgage professional or a realtor and you won't spam our group, we'll let you in. Uh, we've got over 2000 professionals now and great interaction for everybody that's asking questions providing comments liking things thank you you make this community amazing keep the questions coming keep the value coming in our facebook group uh, with that said uh todd or um todd do you have any questions or anything you want to set the table with before we let bill run with it no i mean i'm just excited i think bill said you're going to kick off with a little bit of review from last time bill is that correct yeah, I thought it would be appropriate. I didn't know if everybody would remember it, and it's not complicated stuff. So yeah, if you guys don't mind, I'd love to share my screen and just kind of recap what we're trying to do when we go to Facebook. All right, so uh, I think we... that's a perfect place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and take down my video, uh, and Bill, go ahead and do a bit of review from last week. Um, Todd will give you desktop share, and remember, folks, if you if you have questions post those. If you have takeaways, like if you, Bill said something super smart and you're like, I want to remember that. Remember, this is a mastermind. Share that. Share that with everybody. So rock it out, Bill. <laughs> something super smart. Damn. So uh, a reminder, background. Between realtors and loan officers last year, we spent about $16 billion of our own money on marketing. And all of it, when added up, generated a little over 11% of our business. While 67% of our business came from past clients and referrals, you throw in social media, networking, personal website, anything that we call branding, making people remember you, feel like they know you, that adds up to 78% of your business, while 11% comes from from your quote marketing efforts or lead gen and look I create thousands of leads every month I love lead gen but you don't treat it like it's going to be all your business and everybody says yeah but I already get all that and the reality is 86 percent of past clients uh, uh, say that they would reuse us and or refer us and about 10 percent ever do are a little delusional about just how memorable we are so the real goal with Facebook for us is to make you unforgettable. The same reason that we do the annual mortgage reviews, how do I just stay top of mind? Because the simple fact of the matter is, 
everybody's business seems to come from referrals, repeat, people they know, and yet you lose at least three quarters of it. Between three quarters and 90% and of the business you could have gotten from people you know, you lose. The problem with traditional CRM stuff today is, yeah, I still use it and I still believe it. I'm a big email list guy, but I'm in mercenary mode when I go to my inbox. I've got a thousand unread emails if I've got any. I just want them to go away. That's not going to do it for me anymore. So how do I stay in front of people? And uh, yeah, this is a good one. Um, there you go. 48% of the women in this country got out of, uh, excuse me, checked Facebook before they got out of bed in the morning. Uh, numbers a little lower for men, but we have smaller bladders. Uh, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. How do I stay top of mind? So what we showed last week was, and everybody's like, yeah, but I don't have that many Facebook friends. And of my Facebook friends, uh, uh, you know, I just don't get that much engagement. Here's the math. 16% of your friends will see, will get what you post into their newsfeed. It's against the rules to even promote yourself on your personal page. It's definitely not compliant. So you go to a business page, but only 2% of what you post will get put into somebody's news feed. So it's kind of a waste of time. And the problem is all your friends are over on your personal. So we showed people how to one, uh, uh, convert all your friends into followers. So you can instantly go into Facebook and convert all your friends into followers. Next, you can import into custom audiences all the people you want, uh, your old Calix point files, your old lead files, uh, uh, you name it. Uh, Dave, uh, pick on you a little bit here because, you know, I played with your LinkedIn. How many contacts do you have on LinkedIn, Dave? How many connections? Let him unmute. Um, <laughs> or he's going under an underpass or in a tunnel. No, I, yeah, right. No, I'm here. I, yeah. I want to say almost 12,000, like 11,000 and some change. Wow, that's crazy. Um, you're a machine. So he's got about 12,000, 11,000 and change contacts on LinkedIn. And Dave went in all by himself and did an export from LinkedIn of his LinkedIn imports. Because you know, LinkedIn's always finding everybody they think you should be friends with. So I just for grins, uh, uh, went ahead and imported all the phone numbers out of that list and got 6,300 people, imported all the emails and got 11,000 people. Now it was about 40,000 people that you exported, if I remember, Dave, but of the ones where the emails match or the phone numbers match to somebody that's that's in Facebook and Facebook says, yes, that's, that's a person we're absolutely certain. We'll put them in a custom audience for you. So Here's a custom audience for Dave that when I combine these, I've got about 17,000 people that are all set up. And I got a few others for you that I pulled and queried and things I did, but that's. Hey, I want to, I want to make sure everybody connects the dot. Like when I pulled that down, not only was I able to pull down all my direct contacts, but did it also pull down all my connections. So that was a, a big aha from the last call was the, the concept that you could even do this, you know, that I was able to pull all those and I have retained Bill to help me um, create a personal um, Facebook page. And then, you know, between that custom list of my LinkedIn contact and all of my current Facebook friends, stay tuned folks, you're gonna see some of Bill's handiwork launching, you know, a Dave Savage uh, Facebook page. And I'm super fired up about it, Bill. Thanks for helping out with this. <laughs> Yeah, no worries, no worries, fun stuff. But that's what I'm saying is you can take that. You can take your old AOL email address that you had in 1992. You can take, um, uh, dang, you name it. Any any database you have, you can import that directly into Facebook. And you saw me doing this here. Go into your Facebook page, say create audience, go to a saved audience. Whoop, excuse me, not a saved, that's advanced, that's step two. Uh, you go to custom audience, you say import a customer file, add file from your own, drag and drop it right here, or just click and say upload, and you will instantly upload that. Facebook will match all those, and now all of a sudden you have a great big custom audience. So my goal, remember everything in marketing is growing a database, nurturing a database. Well, 
First, everybody has a database of a few thousand people at a minimum. You just didn't know it. It's everybody you've ever traded an email with or a phone call with. We shove those into to Facebook as a custom audience. Next, we build a custom audience, um, or excuse me, a, a target or a saved audience, which it might be things like, um, uh, here we go, how about a, uh, <laughs> wow, I've got some bizarre audiences I build for people here. Here's a realtor in Venice Beach, and it's all people that have a certain income or a certain age that live in his area, uh, client who's uh, from Brazil and speaks Portuguese within 15 miles of his office in San Diego. We managed to find 26,000 Brazilian Portuguese speaking homeowners. Uh, uh, I've got a first time buyer list for somebody here that um, uh, it's wedding list. Bob, you can see this. It's basically people who are engaged, who are renters, who meet a bunch of financial criteria, income, net worth, whatever, uh, who are deep off in the engagement process. They're working on their wedding vows. They're subscribing to, they're working on caterers. Uh, they're renting, they're actively looking for a home. They have not done recent searches for credit repair, student loan debt forgiveness. And I mean, I can just go on and on and on and on. If I wanted to market to 37 to 39 year old soccer moms, with a net worth over 250,000, maybe in mortgage, we can't do net worth, but um, who drive minivans, who watch Game of Thrones, who, and I mean, on and on. And the whole idea is I've got my now friends, so we import LinkedIn, everything else, boom. Now we're ready to stay in front of those people all the time. Then we got our future friends. That's all the people that perfectly match who we are and whether it's something like this wedding, look at this, I've got 67,000 people that match all that engagement criteria just in California. Uh, just insane what kind of targeting you can do when you're out here doing this stuff. So that's kind of what we went over because there's only three things in marketing, reach, impact, frequency. That's all there is, reach. I'm getting to the right people and that's the biggest mistake we ever make in marketing is we just try to hit cold people over and over and over. And to kind of make this clear, I'll borrow from one of these. When I do ads, and I do them all the time to strangers, I get about a 0.001% response rate when it comes to closed transaction, whether it's real estate, mortgage, whatever. So I got to do about 100,000 ads to get a closed deal. But if I take those same 100,000 ads and I only send them to 2,000 people 50 times throughout the course of a year, I normally pull about 15 to 25 transactions out of that same database. And it's just the familiarity principle. When you become recognized to somebody, it's like a realtor who farms the same neighborhood for five years, you know, mails the postcards every month and shopping carts, whatever. Well, now I can do that on Facebook for almost nothing. And the beauty is everybody who teaches Facebook tells you how to do it organically. And it's a lie. It's just flat out false. Mark Zuckerberg has declared, no, there's no free lunch on Facebook. You just can't get a good reach. No matter what, you're going to get 10 to 20 times the return if you just give Caesar his due or Zuckerberg in this case. And it's a few cents. Uh, you're going to spend from two to five cents per month per person. If you've got a 10,000 person database, you might be spending 5,000 a month. But we find that we'll pull a quarter to a half a percent a year in the first year and then push it up into the one to two percent as you move forward because these people will really get a sense that they know you and over time when they've really met you for those mets the ones we pulled in from linkedin we find those tend to convert about eight to twelve percent annually so think about that if we pull in 500 people that know you that are in the local market that have met you that whatever uh, that's 50 deals a year Take another five thousand people up there that match your criteria and now you're looking at uh, you know, five, even a quarter, we'll say a half a percent. That's an extra 25 deals a year, an extra 50 deals a year in year two. And I can tell you that the average cost to generate a deal for us last year on Facebook was $287 and seven tenths of a cent to reach each person. So if I'm trying to reach them weekly and stay in front of them, instead of 2% to 16% of them seeing my stuff, it's 80, 90% of them seeing my stuff. And it just, 
it just works, guys. I don't know hey, what else. Hey, to say. hey, Bill. Bill, I'm going to jump in on a couple of things. Yeah, so, please. first of all, to get some engagement from the community, I want to know how many folks on this call, and let us know in the question section, did th what Bill talked about, which was, you know, at least download your LinkedIn database. Now, I know I saw a lot of engagement interaction where people were downloading it, but then it was like, now what? You know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I at least want to make sure we speak to that, but please let Todd know, let Jen know in the uh, control panel. If you downloaded it, let just say, I did it. Now, by the way, for those of you that downloaded it, took action, actually improved your number of uh, followers and engagement on your Facebook page, if you went all the way and you implemented the last strategy, let us know that too. I did it all or I did half of it and I didn't, I didn't complete it. And, and if you have a question, let us know what that question is. Now, something else, Bill, I want to make sure we center this around because one of our biggest focuses for 2018 and really just going forward for the referral based local loan officers, that's our community is we want to help them get the maximum, you know, deliver the maximum value and get the maximum value from their customer database. So anyone that they've done a loan for in the past, and let's just use an example. Hey, for the loan officer that has 500 or 1,000 past customers, you know, we want to make sure they have a multi-channel way to keep in touch. Yes, they're emailing, but yes, they also have a Facebook strategy. And then the other habit that we're driving, and I know you're a huge advocate, because who knows, I might have learned this from you 20 years ago, you know, the importance of doing annual reviews. So could you just speak to that a little bit around you know, specifically as it pertains to your past customer database, specifically things that you would do to, you know, drive past customer, or excuse me, drive annual reviews and deliver that service. Could you, could you just talk about how you would, how Facebook would fit into that overall plan and strategy? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fertilizing your field, Dave. It's because I, I want to feel comfortable when I'm reaching out to do those annual reviews. I want to have a maximum, you know, response rate. I want people to feel good about it. The more they think of me as a friend or a trusted uh, uh, contact advisor, the easier it's going to be. So the whole idea that they're seeing me all the time, and it's also reminding them from time to time that I'm in the business or on a regular basis, it's just going to make it so much easier. It's not going to feel awkward. And if you bring it up from time to time, or maybe client doesn't mind without giving their specifics, you mentioning that, hey, I just did an annual review and, and we found this and we're able to do this and don't forget, uh, uh, by the way, we can even do that for somebody that we haven't done a loan for. Click the button here and you can put whatever call to action you want on your page and you can get a hold of me. So just little success stories, anonymous success stories will have people reminding you that they need an annual review, we'll have other people jumping in, if I'm able to ever mention somebody, remember every time I can tag somebody in a post, it's going to all their friends as well. Um, but no matter what, it's that, it's making, it, it's no like trust, it's never changed, it's no like trust. If they really feel like they know me, like me, trust me, then the annual review just becomes a, a very smooth part of my regular daily routine and it's not awkward with them and it doesn't feel weird to reach out to them. And candidly, I, like I said, you can get them reaching out to you a whole lot more frequently. Love, love hey, that. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump in real can, quick, Dave. Hey, Todd, one more, one more thing and I'll let you jump. Go. I hope <laughs> you guys heard what Bill said around, you know, tell stories about the annual reviews that you do. You know, we, our marketing team created some images to help you, you know, tell the story of how you're a mortgage coach and you help families, whether it's an annual review or you, you know, you just, you help them manage their mortgage over the course of their lifetime. So, you know, think of the content that you're creating. It's important that you're creating content that tells the story of how, hey, a family came to meet with me, uh, you know, they told me their goals and I recommended this and now they're going to build X amount of money over the course of five years and wealth and they got their dream home. So, uh, no one does that. You know, I just stories. call it kind of a story, yeah, story selling better than Denise Donahue. So, uh, Todd, I'll hand it back to you. Sure. Just a couple of quick things because I'm watching the questions over here as you guys are going. So, tons of questions on the last video. It's easiest place to find it is in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind group on Facebook. So, if you're not part of that group, then ask to be joined in and Dave and I will let you in. We'd love to have you in there. 
There's also a link to Bill's spreadsheet that he shared last time. So, you know, there's about a dozen different uh, classes that he's taught that are available on there. I mean, it's a super, I mean, amazing uh, content that he's shared with our community, including one on um, the story branding that we're talking about. So there's just great stuff on here for a lot of what you are saying. And I, and I just see all the people. There's a bunch of you, it looks like, who have done it or having great reach, 10,000 people reached. I mean, I love seeing these numbers. Um, I see a bunch of you who are stuck. Um, a bunch of you are stuck. So those of you who are stuck, the instructions are in there. And so um, I just want to tell you that's the best place to find it. And uh, all that is in there. And we'll continue to repost it and engage in there if you need to find it. But um, I'll keep answering some of those questions on there. Keep putting them up there. And I'll use that when we get to Q&A at the end to um, ask Bill questions. And certainly anyone who wants to raise their hand and be brought in the conversation on audio or video, uh, we can do that as well. So don't... Uh, don't be shy there. Don't be afraid to raise your hand if you want to come in and uh, be part of, part of the conversation. I see um, a couple people that have their hands up, so awesome. Uh, but I will uh, turn my video back off and hand it back over to Bill. I, it seems like we're getting a lot of questions around what kind of content are you posting, so I don't know if you can jump in on that at some point, Bill. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, hey, hey, I, do, I do want to also tell everybody that if you go to our YouTube channel, there is a playlist called Productivity Mastermind. Um, so whether you go into the group or whether you go into the YouTube channel, you can get to this video. And then also a reminder, if you're watching the video from YouTube, the link to Bill's class are down below in descriptions. So, um, there you go. Back to you, Bill. You got it. Am I still sharing my screen by the way? You are. Yes. Okay. So real quick to the first question that came up a few minutes ago that you guys brought up, you know, how do I do that? Great, downloading from LinkedIn, simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, go to your Facebook page, I'm on my Facebook page. Uh, uh, you will go to your ad manager, which will be under these three dots. Uh, click on that, go to ad manager. When you go into ad manager, you'll have the ability to go to audiences, ads, it'll be up here. Uh, oh, I just wanna go to audiences. And I'm already on audiences. And that's where you just say create an audience. Custom audience is the one you upload, or it's a pixel or an engagement audience. Everybody that watches one of your videos or likes one of your posts, whatever, they'll automatically go into your audience. And then saved audience is where you create those funky audiences we were talking about, uh, where I can come in here and do things like, check this out. Um, likely to move. And now I've got, let's see, and Facebook always describes it over on the right when you mouse over. I don't know if you guys can see this, but here's 4.5 million people. And this doesn't come from Facebook. It comes from a partner, Epsilon. It's a model built on survey responses, people who've recently responded to mover re, uh, offers of whatever. Bottom line, these are people that are highly probable to move within the next three to five months. Um, the stuff that's in here is insane. And, Look, I was there in three clicks. Uh, so there's how to do it. Now, what Dave just said, or, or Todd, maybe it was you, what do I post? And that's probably the biggest one. So let me just borrow a, another PowerPoint up here. This is from a video training. Um, the first rule is it, it, what you wanna post doesn't matter. It only matters what people wanna see. When you post, nothing but market updates or you're a realtor and you post nothing but my latest listing and it gets no engagement that gets scored by Facebook. It gets evaluated. It lowers your edge rank, your affinity score, and nobody will get your stuff moving forward. They just won't show it because nobody engages with it. Nobody likes it. You need stuff people engage with. So the rule is post regularly and 80% of it is for them and 20% of it's for you. Every fifth post can be a reminder and should be a reminder about something like a, a mortgage review or something. But the other stuff is just meant to remind them you're in the business. So when I do that, I do all kinds of, of bizarre stuff uh, uh, that I know is gonna get a lot of engagement. If we were to look at, uh, if you guys remember last week, I think I brought up Chris Prickett's stuff. He does interviews, excuse me, there you go. He does, whoops, <laughs> interviews. Um, with local businesses and people in his community. This is a really cool strategy. It's just interesting locals, whatever, local wisdom, his is business interviews. But if you look at this, 5,900 views, 3,000 views, 871, 1,616. Chris is in a 
town of about 13,000 homes and he gets between 20 and he's topped 50,000 views a month a couple times and does ridiculous numbers. Great exposure, but everybody wants to see this. And when I have other people in my videos, I get to tag them or mention them and I pull in their stuff. So what kind of stuff? And, and if you go to my own Facebook page or to the, the smart sheet that Todd mentioned, I've got tutorials. You can look at it. There's a lot of content ideas, but this is the one thing I want to give you when it comes to content. You don't have to create it. You can simply curate good content. You can use things like uh, contentstudio.io, uh, you uh, buzzsumo, google.com forward slash trends and find content that's trending and just share that. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. And I don't really do these. I only do them to my clients as an example. One, square videos pull about double the viewership of a rectangular video. Quick tip for you guys if you're wanting more views. It lets you put your headline on the top. The branding, no, I would never get that aggressive with my branding. We do a lot of different wrappers. But that way, if somebody does a scroll by, your logo or brand is always on there. But I spotted a trending video about this a uh, robot food delivery robot in San Francisco for DoorDash. I went, God, what do I do with this? Because it was trending. It was only a couple days old. It was getting a ton of shares. You guys all get millions of shares because you grab that stuff and just, or you don't grab it, you just share it. I grab it, download it, and alter it under fair use law. If I alter it materially for demonstration, example, commentary, or editorial purposes, it becomes my content. So all I do is record an intro that says, and came up with this headline, driverless car showing homes for real estate agents. Uh, and I open with driverless car showing homes for real estate agents. Ah, not quite, but we're getting a little closer. Check this out. This blew me away when I saw it. That's it. I did an intro for it. And then I put it in my little wrapper and I share, and I don't share this. I tell my clients, <laughs> my coaching clients to do this. And I just send them samples and examples, but I share it. When I find a good article, I don't share the article. I shoot a little video at my laptop and just say blah, 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 blah. And I give a little a, a, a clip notes version, a, a synopsis, a few of the key takeaways. Anytime it can end in a question mark, it's a good thing. Uh, uh, you know, I agree with the author on three points, but I think he's off on one. I'm curious to see what you think. Let me know in the comments down below or whatever. But that's it. I find I find content that I know, and like I said, use something like, uh, not one mob, here we go, like Content Studio. I come in here and say, yeah, show me content in the last 48 hours about home ownership, about realtors, about mortgage, about whatever, and then I find the stuff that's trending the best, how many shares, how many likes, how many tweets, how many retweets, and I find the stuff I know is gonna kill it, and then I use it, and I find a way to tie it into mortgage or reminder. By the way, here's another hot tip for you. At the very least, at the very least, you can go to Sniply, S-N-I-P dot L-Y, and get an account there. And anything you find when you share it with Sniply, it'll put your call to action button or your logo, whatever you want, my little contact bill with my logo on everything I share. So everything I share, has my branding and my call to action. And that's really all I need. I just need to share stuff that makes me look cool or likable because that's that's all people are really looking for at the end of the day is they just wanna do business with friends. Um, uh, three more quick tips for you and there's an entire content training up here. And by the way, all the resources are in the notes tab on my face, Facebook if you just wanna download them. But <clears throat> Paper.li will feed you content every day on whatever topics you want. It'll come into your inbox. Scoop.it, feed.ly, feedly, um, and Google Trends, Google Trends.com or Google.com forward slash trends forward slash hot videos. Any of these will feed you content, but the whole idea is you don't have to create it. You just have to find it and share it ideally with video, ideally from your Facebook page, and everything has to have a boost. 
if it doesn't have a boost on it and you don't want to just boost it with the boost button that's why you build this audience <clears throat> and set it up so that it's um uh, automatically boosting in a perfect world uh, uh when i mentioned chris prickett before uh let's just show his stuff again uh like I said, he did almost 200 deals last year, which I believe is a multiple of what he did the year before. He's growing so fast. And you can see all square videos all have the little text on the top and the hook. But um, every one of his posts, if I recall, had a 20 or a $25 automatic boost on it, which is making it get, look at this one, 12,000 views. And it's just a community video that reminds people that he's in the business and again well, the, don't you the, look the branding is there even if they scroll by they still just see him see him see him and that kills it so god guys i could go on and on content's probably the funnest topic there is but uh uh tell me am i rambling too much give me some questions guide me todd dave <laughs> i love it uh i'm gonna let dave uh, oh go ahead Oh, I, I know, Dave, did you want to say anything else? I know that you've got um, some other questions burning probably here. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to ask one more question and then let you drive it for the rest of the call, Todd. But, the, you know, the, I, I really want to nail the, the type of content that would be created to promote myself as a mortgage coach that does mortgage reviews. So I, I would like you to describe that also for any mortgage coach members that are, you know, that are doing posts, that are telling stories, that bring that awareness to your, you know, your friends and clients and, and your realtors, you know, and build a, also, you know, I think it's important to delineate, you know, there's one way that you message for you, for the borrowers, your past customer database, and there's another way that you message for your referral partners and your agents. So I just want to make sure that's covered and then I'm going to really put it on mute and let the rest of the community drive the rest of the call. But you can speak to that. Great, great points. Um, stories are always the best. No matter what, anytime I can tell a story, anytime I can say, hey, you know what? I was uh, uh, out the other night and somebody was saying something about buying a house, but they had to wait longer because they had a foreclosure back in the... Guys, please never let... And I just use a story about something that... that Never let somebody, if you ever hear somebody say that, be sure to tell them that. I was doing an annual mortgage review for a client the other day and what we found was, and what they said was, and most people don't think, but here's the reality of the situation and I'm able to, to each time I'm telling a story, I'm looking for a story that other people will hear it and go, hey, wait a second, that's, that's me, that applies to me. So stories are some of your best, uh, offers, are always good reminders um, uh, and then in between like I said I do stuff that's not even necessarily mortgage related content I have one person whose strategy is he's a spectacular joke teller Mark sends out on a regular basis and it's always him just leaning into his video camera going okay three guys walk into a bar and and then at the end he might bring up the hey you know anyway that's enough for today hey listen the other night somebody was telling me and da, 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 and don't ever let somebody think that because we can and we want to and we need to and be sure and send them my way and he does that about every fourth or fifth time so share every success story you possibly can i can tell you also share mistakes people love they love mistakes, they love traps, they love tricks. We love dirty laundry, I don't know how else to say it. We put up a lender traps uh, uh, website some years ago for somebody, uh, um, wrote a little white paper, the 27 biggest scams, tricks and gimmicks that unscrupulous lenders use to separate you from your hard earned dollars. Uh, we were getting about 30,000 downloads a month within three months of that. People love the, the the scams, the tricks, the gimmicks, the, the, the look out for what unscrupulous lenders do, offering up warnings from the scary stories. Maybe you see something on the, you know, Chrisman report or, or whatever, when you spot or hear these warnings, 
You need to be the one offering the warnings. That's another one. When you spot things that you can warn people about in your mortgage reviews, that's one that you definitely want to warn people about. Um, those are all strong, strong. And then just advice, tips. Hey, I ran into a mistake with a client the other day where they had and they didn't keep a paper trail. And if you're just doing this with and you need to, so make sure that you, uh, because even if you have a great FICO score, this can come up. Just nuggets, short, sweet nuggets. And then the rest of it is just staying in front of them with, with stuff that reminds them you're in the business. And the remind them in your business, the remind them you're in the business can be like you see on Chris's stuff. It's just a watermark on every video. Uh, or it's the full wrapper uh, uh, when we switched them later to the square videos up here where we wrap every video or every post. And whether you use Snipply or eLinkio or any of the tools that will do that, just make sure your branding's there. Your profile pic needs to either be a logo or I prefer a logo with your picture. Put your logo down in the corner and then put your photo up there so that because this is going to be on everything and you just want that constant brand impression. You're always in front of them and make them think you're a friend. Uh, sorry, Dave. I, I, I just get rambling on this stuff. It's, it's, <laughs> that's that's awesome. All good. We're all getting good. some comments about yeah. how epic you're doing. <laughs> I don't know about that. I always feel so lost with you guys. Um, uh, so, so this is questions. Jen. I've got questions. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Go um, ahead. I have questions, one quick too, question. but let's get some questions yeah. from our list. Yeah. All right, Jen, you go first. No, that's okay. I want to hear. I want. I want our group to to add, get their questions asked. So I, I can talk to them right, later. So I'm going to ask a couple of the questions that are on here, and then I've got Karen and Keith with their hands up. I'm going to unmute you guys in just a couple of minutes, so be ready to, to go live with your question unless you accidentally put your hand up and put it down. But anyone else who wants to get in, let me know. Um, square video, how do you make a square video, Bill? Oh, um, <laughs> I don't do anything anymore. I do it all on Upwork. Uh, I've got a square video tutorial up there on, on both my Facebook page and the Smartsheet that you can watch, but in a nutshell, you go into whatever your video editor is, movie maker, whatever came with your computer, doesn't matter. And usually you right click on the, the canvas, the workspace, and you just change the shape. You, if it's 1920 by 1080, which they will usually be, you make it 1080 by 1080. Now your video is gonna be there and you're gonna have black space above and below. I drop a white, black, whatever box over that. <clears throat> and then I just put my, my text in there because memes are so popular I use the font impact which is the meme font and it looks like a meme and I got that above and below and now if you can drop in a logo and a picture on the bottom one and now you save that file and every time you make a video you just drop it straight into that little uh, uh, pre-existing video file and now every one of your videos is square and it lets you put uh, uh, the reason to click, that's the hard part. I gotta give people a reason to click uh, uh, when I'm doing this so that they will click on my videos. Let me show you an example. Uh, here's uh, Darren who, and by the way, this is a straight up lead gen. A uh, uh, thousand bucks says I can sell your home faster for more money, blah, blah, blah. Well, first off, this is a square video. That's just left over because it's on YouTube. Facebook serves it up square. Um, it can't have more than 20% text on the thumbnail. So you'll notice the very first frame, there is nothing on the bottom. We bring that in on the second frame of the video uh, uh, so that for a 30th of a second, it's not there. But since it auto plays, everybody sees it. That gets around Facebook's rules uh, in this one. And we do a lot of stuff like this. Um, and. I'm not going to speak for anybody's compliance department, but we've done incredibly well on the mortgage side with things that essentially say, I'm so confident that I can provide better service, better product, better whatever, that I'll put my money where my mouth is. I've got, a, in this case, a thousand, typically it's 500, a $500 uh, American Express travel gift card, and we get those for 50 cents, uh, uh, or excuse me, 10 cents on the dollar for 50 bucks just for giving me a shot, whether you go with me or somebody else. And because it's not tied to the actual funding of a loan, it's de deemed to be appropriate by most compliance departments in real estate, same thing. But 
That's what Darren does. Now think about this. He's given people a hundred dollars of his own money for every listing appointment. Darren did over two hundred and seventy million dollars last year. Um, it just insanely effective with these little square. And by the way, everything shot with a cell phone. Everything, and he's just standing against a white wall. If you look, there's a nail hole up there somewhere where he takes the picture down, shoots it with his cell phone against his white wall, sends it off to somebody in, I believe, Argentina uh, uh, that edits his video for nine or 10 bucks a piece and puts these things together. And anytime he wants leads, he just goes in and hits the button. You can see right here, I've got an ad campaign for an event next week running. Uh, I've actually got quite a few of them, uh, but this particular one has generated 34 registrants at 13.29 a piece. All I do if I want to start and stop, and when I go into Facebook, is just it's a play and a pause button. If I want to pause it, I hit pause. If I want to start it, and this one's paused right now, I wasn't doing good enough for me. Uh, but anytime I want leads, I go in and hit a play button, and the leads come in, and it's that simple. Sorry, I know we're getting off on tangents, but um, <laughs> people like your tangents, Bill. That's okay. Good, what about good. Um, just a couple of quick questions on where you get a American Express travel gift card for ten cents oh. on the dollar? <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? Shoot me an email, uh, a bill at Bill Hillestad uh, on the side, or message me through Facebook. Um, I do some marketing uh, uh, for them, so it's kind of a insider deal on that one. I've got other clients that give away cruises. Uh, got somebody who gives away about 50 cruises a month. Um, uh, they cost 150 bucks, so he spends 7,500 a month just on cruises plus ad spend. But you got to realize if every one of those is a a full prequal uh, uh, or a listing appointment, uh, even if you only got half the business, yeah, great. I'm paying 300 bucks a, a prequal. They have to actually do a deal with somebody else before you're going to give it to them. It's they can't just cheat you, and it, it's the math works. The math works incredibly well. But yeah, if you want some, let me know. I've side note. There you go. American Express. Uh, uh, whoops. Five hundred. <laughs> American Express travel gift card. I buy them by the hundreds because uh, they're such good lead magnets. By the way, anytime you can have downloads, links to lists, uh, uh, if you're working with a realtor and you want to get them going, and by the way, that's the most valuable thing you can do. If you learn how to convert your LinkedIn and your personal profile, your personal profile into a page, your LinkedIn into a custom audience, and then you build a target audience, and you can do that for real estate agents or financial planners, even more valuable, divorce attorneys, whatever it is, referral partners, it's a superpower. Uh, I, I mean, candidly, it's a superpower. You can freak them out. And now you bring in other things like how to generate these leads, little downloads with realtors. We make a list of the links for HUD and Fannie and everybody else for all of their uh, foreclosure properties. And, and if you'd like a complete list of all the wholesale properties that are being offered by all the government, blah, 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 click here. And by the way, on Facebook, you can have lead ads. So when somebody clicks, they can fill out the form right on Facebook. You don't even have to build a landing page. And it auto-populates their name, their phone number, their email, whatever you need. And so all they have to do is hit submit. And there you go. And then I send them to a page and I just give them the six or seven links to all the HUD properties or whatever. And any foreclosure list I go find, those convert like crazy. CMAs, Super CMA, any of those CMA programs. Thinking about selling your home? Find out what it's worth instantly. Uh, click here and, and God, they just crush it. Give me a shot and I'll give you a $500 travel gift card. Um, and then anytime I want leads, I just hit the play button and away we go and I get a bunch of leads and then you hit the pause button when you got enough and turn it off. All right, so Bill makes this sound so much easier than I know it is. I'm gonna um, unmute a couple of you who have your hands up. I'm gonna start with you, Karen. Um, ladies first, so hopefully you are ready. I'm going to unmute you and let you ask Bill your question. All right, let's see how fast this comes on. Are you there, Karen? This works sometimes, Bill, and sometimes it doesn't because she's had her hand up for a while um, yeah. and her microphone's not turning green. So I'm going to 
remute you, Karen, and I'm going to try to unmute you, Keith, and hopefully you're ready to rock and roll. All right, Keith, can you hear me? Are you ready to uh, ask Bill a question? Keith, are you there? Come on, Keith. We need to give them an advance warning so they can unmute. All right. Well, all right, I'm going to remute you, Keith, and I'm going to turn. put your guys' hands down. If you guys want to uh, chat, then let me know. Um, do uh, Michelle, do you have any questions for Bill? I am um, I'm still processing through my notes, and you do make it look so much easier than I think it is, but I got <laughs> lost about 15 minutes ago, and then I got caught back up, and I'm like, um, I do want to ask a question, though. If okay. I go to LinkedIn, pull my list out, Put it into a campaign and call it my LinkedIn list. Yep. Would it would it go to would 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 it automatically look for those Facebook pages and become friends with them or how does it, I don't know how I guess I don't understand how the marketing goes. Like okay, how so does it know to go to these people? Facebook allows you to target, and that's why I'm so excited about Facebook because the irony is I I don't I don't do Facebook. I. I Check in once a month. I'm a reclusive, introverted nerd. But Facebook can put posts because when you say ads on Facebook, you, you never really run ads over on the sidebar. It's just a post. And somewhere in light gray, it says sponsored. Nobody will ever notice that if your content is actually something they like or care about. Um, but it's just posts. So they'll push that in front of people and they can use the targeting or whatever. So when I go to to do a post or whatever, I can pick, if I can find my mouse, I can pick who I wanted to go to. So if I wanted to go to the imported contacts, this is a contact list from somewhere that I imported. Um, when I say boost post, it will automatically go to this, uh, or I, then I can choose saved audience or custom audience and it'll go to this. I can choose multiple custom audiences and say, I want to go to this one and this one. I can advertise or have it go to my followers. And if I've made all my friends into followers automatically, then it's the same as friends. I can, I can advertise to my followers, my followers and my friends of my followers, my followers, my friends of followers and my audience. So every time you go to advertise, you have the option to, um, sounds like someone's making a smoothie. Uh, the option to go to to whoever you want. So anytime you run an ad, anytime you boost a post, you get to pick who it goes to. And you can either do it one off and you're making it up as you go, or you can have these saved audiences. And that's what I'm trying to get people to do. Get a saved audience or a couple saved audiences that you go to over and over and over and over again. So when you have your LinkedIn, my suggestion would be go in, if that's all you're going to use, great. But if you've got some others, go create a saved audience. And when I go to create my saved audience and I say, yeah, I want um, uh, needlepoint lovers who are, have a net worth over a quarter million who are uh, 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 politically extreme in one direction or the other and like this author, uh, plus add my custom audience so I can add a custom audience. Oh, here's the Dave Savage import. Uh, uh, sorry, Dave, I'm disclosing all your stuff here. Um, and here's his connections from LinkedIn. So if I wanted to, uh, and you can see there's one I did wrong. When you're importing phone numbers, by the way, you have to put a one in the front of every number. Uh, but there's a tutorial that shows you how to do that on my page. Um, and I forgot to do that. Uh, but yeah, I can advertise now to there's my LinkedIn import and then I can come down here and say only people in this zip code uh, uh, that have this income that do whatever. Or now that I have this pin on the map, I can just say, oh, no, not there. Let's drop a pin right here and say everybody within uh let's go with uh, five miles of that pin. So now I'm going to market to these people, plus those people, plus whatever. So it's, watch the tutorials. It's fun, it's easy, it's really self-explanatory. You just start clicking. And I'm the most technologically inept human on the face of the planet. I'm way too old to do this millennial crap. If I can do it, anybody can. I love if it. Not, 
right, 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 so, I mean, I mean, you got this. Me too. <laughs> so you got this great spreadsheet available, Bill. Like, and it's a little bit overwhelming. There's so much stuff there. So, is there yeah. a recommendation when someone gets that goes to your smart sheet? Do they start at the top and go down, or is there something like I got, particular you would recommend for the novices? I got barrage with so many questions last time that I started doing this. It's just an experiment, sort of by started putting everything up on Facebook so that I could have an explanation. So up there, I do a training every Wednesday. Here's an archive of every single training. It'll take a while to go through it. Um, it's the same thing that's on the smart sheet. I just, here I get to have thumbnails and, and explanations. Ah, shut up, Bill. By the way, I refuse to watch my own videos. I will not do it no matter what. Um, oh, you I'll look great, Bill. So that's my tip for anybody doing videos. Don't don't watch yourself. You'll never you'll never post them. Uh, introduction and foundation for everybody. But building your target audiences in Facebook for everybody. Custom content feeds everybody. Uh, from there, I think you kind of got it all. If you want to get into more advanced stuff, we kind of get into some more advanced stuff. But truthfully, if you just go to notes. Um, and this is where I put the tutorials. So the first one would be this one, migrating your profile friends to new business page followers. And this is where everybody starts. And then I just, here's the link to do it. It's kind of a hidden link on Facebook. It's hard to find if you don't know what where to go. And then this one is a tutorial that will show you step-by-step step how to go in and convert everybody that's on your profile into a follower on your page or 95% of them. Some people have a privacy setting or whatever that won't let them follow a page, but um, there's a complete tutorial document there. And then from there, if yeah, we, we actually have a team, we need to merge a bunch of ours. Great. There's a merger document on there that you can go to and they're all there. So start with migration. But remember, there's only there's only really three or four steps, depending on how you define them. I need to get a whole bunch of people in an audience on Facebook. So my steps when I work with people, first, we're going to do your page. Make it pretty. Make it look good. Make it complete. It's got to have your profile. I like to have a movie as a background. I usually just have people do a slideshow. There's a tutorial video up there on how to do it in PowerPoint. You don't even need a video editor. Once you got a good page, now I got a good audience. Who am I going to stay in front of? Now that I have a good audience, I need to have a content plan and we make people make a content plan. What are you going to post and when? Is it going to be video, not video? You're going out and shooting interviews. You're just going to do it at your laptop. But we make them make a plan and we set up the content feeds so that the content's coming to you. So you can just kind of pick stuff you want to share. And then as part of the content plan, we set up what is you going to do a $5 boost on everything and put up three things a week. You're going to put up two things a week and do a $20 boost on everything. And then anything that achieves a certain goal, a la half a cent per impression, I'm going to put another 50 bucks on it, let it ride and let it go big. But by the way, with a simple budget like that, plan on it costing you between one and two cents per impression. When you get a little better, if you do better content, you'll get it down to a half a cent. Mine was seven tenths of a cent last year average. Um, and I do a lot of ads that cost me three, four, five cents an impression, but I'm getting leads. I don't care. Um, so that hurts my averages. But yeah, if it was a penny an impression and you wanted 10,000 video views a month, yeah, you're spending about a hundred bucks a month. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, about a hundred bucks a month, hundred bucks a month. And you'd be getting 10,000 views a month from people that are going to start to feel like they know I like, can trust you. If we went onto my personal Facebook page, there would be a post from a guy named Rick Ming. Freaks me out. He's always there. I know a junior Ming in high school, but I don't know Rick Ming. I don't know how I know him, but I'm convinced I know him from somewhere. I just don't remember because I'm old and senile. Well, you could be that person with anybody you want. You could pick, you could pick the financial planners who are uh, golf fanatics so that you'd always have something to talk about when you meet them. People that are University of Oregon duck freaks uh, uh, that are looking to buy a home, whatever it is, but pick your audience and just stay in front of them. That's your three steps. I got to have a pretty Facebook page. I got to have an audience. I got to have a plan to put stuff in front of them at least once a week. 
that will get their attention. And then every fourth post is something about mortgage and mortgage coach is the perfect thing to be using for your stories. And in my reviews, what do I find? And that gives you your stories for your mortgage stories. I love it. So um, budget question. So you said a hundred bucks a month. I mean, what's your average client spending per month? Uh, 300, a couple grand. Just the, the philosophical thing, guys. People always say, what should I spend on marketing? Well, the only marketing budget that I'll ever work for is a blank check. And it freaks people out. And just think of it this way. If you say, I'm going to spend 500 a month, really, even if it's not working, that's stupid. I'm going to spend that still stupid. I'm buying $20 bills. I'm selling $20 bills. I'm selling them to you right now, Todd, for 18 bucks. How many do you want to buy? 15 bucks. How many? And the answer better be as many as you'll sell me. I'll go max my credit cards. I'll borrow for today. Hey, give me a loan. I'm going to buy all I can because I know I'm making money. Well, if we're generating loans, average cost last year, 287. Let's say it's a grand for you. I'm generating loans for a grand. If my commission's anything over 2,500 and I have my systems down and procedures, forget trying to get cheaper loans. Just figure out how to do more and more and more. When you figure out how to buy a $20 bill for 10 bucks, Stop trying to figure out how to do it for five. Just figure out how to do more and more and more. And your costs will come down over time. But So your budget should be a blank check. To start, it should always be at least 10% of whatever you want to make. Because when I hear people go, well, I want to make $50,000 a month. But right now I'm making 10. So I figure I should spend about 500 a month. No, if you want to make it, you've got to spend it. It will always, always, always work, but you just don't spend it until you kind of figure it out. So first, dive in, spend 300, a, Chris Prickett, 300 a month. That was his budget. 20 bucks a booze, 15 videos a month, uh, 20 to 50,000 views a month, and he's a rock star. He's a legend up there. He can't even go into a restaurant without people stopping him and saying, hey, aren't you the guy that does all the videos? and what not? He just kills it with 300. Love it. All right. So, so we're wrapping into the, the last two minutes. So one of the things that I've taken away is that really all the questions that people have are available in the smart sheet. So if you're not part of the mortgage coach, um, productivity mastermind on Facebook, ask to be a member. Um, the past video is in there and on YouTube, this video will be in there later today and you can get access to the smart sheet. Also, they just need to go to BillHillstead.com on Facebook. That's the your page that they should be following, Bill. Um, I think it's Hillstead LLC. Uh, uh, it's from my consulting business. But yeah, the smart sheet you're right. talking I'll about right here, a master resource library, and it's nothing but links and tutorials. And God, you wanna get into branding? This is from my branding trainings. It's all there, your database. Uh, uh, just my suggestion, Get fresh ink in your printer, buy a ream of paper, print all this stuff out, and stack it up, and you're now you're good to go forever. Three-day weekend, lock yourself away. You got you got <laughs> a couple of days to uh, to get a head start. And so um, I would just encourage you guys to spend some time going through there before you reach out and harass Bill, um, because he's a, obviously a busy guy. And I just know that this is going to be, again, the top watch video. Bill, you crushed it. You added a ton of value. I feel like um, we're, you know, we're just so appreciative of you spending time. Um, I think you're all over is what we all like. I think that you continue to drive directions that, that we all needed. And I think we probably could go for another two hours and um, you would still uh, have our heads spinning. But um, but the bottom line is, is we're really appreciative of you taking the time in here and really giving us the value, right? I mean, a lot of people come in, they're like, oh, you can buy what I'm selling. Here it is. Bill's giving it away. And so um, I would just say, just get to work on it, right? I'm seeing a few of you who've done it and are getting huge number of impressions, huge number of views um, because you're implementing it. You know, get off the phone today uh, or get off the call today, you know, block the next hour and then just start looking through this, figuring out what you're going to do. And Bill's giving you the steps, right? Start with LinkedIn, move it to your Facebook page and uh, we'll get you rolling. So I, uh, I appreciate Stop. you as always, Bill, for being here. Oh, thank you. That's it, everybody. Just, just, Commit to 10, 20, 30, whatever thousand impressions a month, and you'll figure it out from there. You'll figure out the content, you'll figure out whatever, but if you just commit that you're gonna get seen by 10,000 people a month, same people over and over and over, pick any people, I don't care who it is, you can't can't mess it up. Uh, if you get that much exposure, you'll get the business. It's just pretty simple.
that's where your business comes from anyway. You just don't get enough exposure. All right, guys. Well, you have an action plan. Uh, again, appreciate you all being here, taking time out of your busy weeks. And um, have a great weekend. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Dave. And we will see you here next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, guys. Love doing this. No, we're so appreciative. Thanks again. All right, guys. See you all <laughs> soon.